Okay, there should be some numbers coming up soon. Uh, what do we have here? Oh, it says recording already. Okay, it, just, it didn't say three, two, one. It just popped us into record. So, hi, I'm, I'm Vance Stevens. I'm in Penang, Malaysia right now, uh, which is the same time zone as... Jane. I'm Jane Chen. Yes, I'm uh -huh, from Taipei. Chen. In Taipei, yeah. Okay, so um, we just came from uh, what was that? That was an ITDI. Um, I can't remember what they called them. Some uh, weekly forum where they were. Well, there were. There was inter an interesting discussion because they were they were talking about what uh, you have to do if you are suddenly thrust into the position of having to teach online or in a blended environment. See, this is a course which we're doing, where both of us are participating in a course on uh, uh, creating and using blended learning environments. And um, so we're in the second week of this course. But anyway, that was an interesting, we were just listening to ITDI, doing a Facebook uh, webcast and they had two people talking the first guy his name was Rhett and I thought his situation he, you know is he's, he's interesting he's been he said he was trying to uh, convince his school that they should do more in the way of uh, online learning and apparently they've just now where, where was he teaching I can't remember South Korea South Korea yeah yeah so he South Korea Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. He said he's been wanting to teach online for four years and he's been trying, but um, he hadn't started until recently because of the coronavirus. Um, yeah. So people are, are trying to work out how to do it. And I'm, I'm not sure, maybe some people have taken my course to for me to tell them how to do it. Of course, that I'm not really telling anyone how to do it. I'm just doing it and uh, hoping that people can learn from my example how to do it. I don't know. What Great do you example, think? yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know Schoology uh, the week before the school started, before the course started. I, I'd been using Schoology in our, um, I think you participated in the moderator training courses, mm -hmm. the session, where yes. Martha had set up a Schoology, mm -hmm. Martha Ramirez, and uh, we were all given administrator access or course writer access, I can't remember. So Martha basically set it up, but then we contributed to it. So in our con contributory roles, I learned some things about it, which I thought was well, very interesting. But then when I came, it came time for me to set one up, I was I, quite taken aback. I didn't really, kind of like Moodle in a way. I mean, you can't just walk into Moodle. You have to learn yeah. a bit about Moodle. Mm -hmm. but anyway, uh, when... Um, I was in Cambodia for a conference there, and then from there, because I'd been in Thailand for two weeks before that, uh, sort of working, I decided to take a, a few days off, and I went over to Thailand and went diving back from Cambodia. And then at that point, I found, I think it was, I, actually I was at the conference on the 8th of um, February when I found out that uh, Relo Bangkok were actually going to push this thing, because I wasn't really sure up to then how it was going to be, um, how should I say, marketed. And, um, you know, I mean, it was, they asked me to do it, so it was really up to them to market it, I thought. So, um, but anyway, we got that together uh, because there was um, some event in Bali. They had a retreat there and everybody went to Bali to kind of uh, do whatever they were having to do. And it was all, uh, you know, these people, are, they, they work intensively, so. Um, it was on the 8th they came back from Bali and they wrote me and said, okay, you're on, you know, we're, we're going to send out an announcement now to our people. And that's when I started 
thinking because I've been very busy up to then. I mean, I've been two weeks doing workshops and a plenary and all that. And uh, so that was when I really got my mind around, okay, I've got to do this. And uh, realized I didn't really know much about Schoology <laughs> as far as just getting it started up. But I found out having, I mean, they've got great materials online. So you can go to Schoology and you can find all the, you can find the manuals and you can figure out in a day, I, I had it down, you know, so it was uh, just a little hitch. But basically, that's, that's when I got uh, familiar with Schoology mm -hmm. and figured I could actually set up something that um, uh, would work. And we were, we were working to start on the 17th of February, I think. But mm -hmm. uh, because of the they, – all, by then, they only had a few people, maybe 10 people enrolled for the course, and only four of them were actually participants. And mm -hmm. Others were people who were monitoring the course from Relo Bangkok and uh, Bobby, for example, and um, my beautiful assistant. And um, so anyhow, there, there weren't that many people there, so we agreed we would schedule the first webinar for February 20th, which we did. And the course actually started from February 20th and it goes for three weeks. So um, anyhow, the, the point I'm actually making, though, is that it's really easy if you just if you're in the situation where you have to do it, you know, because someone tells you, "Well, we've got a virus and we're not meeting our classes anymore," and you have to do it. Schoology seems to be kind of a nice way to actually be able to go to a, a site that gives you free space online and gives you something very right. similar. To, mm -hmm, yeah, it gives you something similar to Moodle, mm -hmm. where you can uh, interact with participants. But as I uh, got to working with it, I realized that the best way to set up a course, in my opinion, is starting with PB Works. Uh, do you use PB Works much, Jane? Or do, what, do, what do you use to sort of conceptualize your courses? Well, um, well, I've used PB Works for quite some time now. I, I've got a sub, several courses on PB Works or several websites mm -hmm. that I used. Um, and then I think, I, well, it, it worked really well with my students because they could um, edit and post um, their assignments there. I asked them to do dictation and I could just, um, uh, you know, grade their assignments online. Now, they how do they edit. submit their assignments? Well, 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 what what I did was I grouped them into groups and then they each had a separate page so that you know um, I give I gave them a video and they would have to like uh, do a dictation like one minute dictation per person so um, everybody uh, did their their share of work and I just had to go through them online and they could see each other's work because it's a you know it perhaps it's a four minute video they're doing one minute each so they had to do you know uh they it's kind of a group work and i i think it worked really well um for for that purpose and so um i've been using pb works uh yeah uh, I, I think it's it's great but then after after, after, afterwards, um, um, I think I we, we switched to we started um, looking at Moodle and and my university they have they have um, Wisdom Master an, like a LMS, uh, LMS setup and so I switched I kind of used both yeah. What do they have exactly? LMS Master. It's called Wisdom Master. It's I think it's a lo it's a created by a local company in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And now I use Google Classroom because mm -hmm. I like like I like them to share their documents, a Google document, so that mm -hmm. you know I could uh, easily give them feedback and. Yeah. Well, the people in Thailand are pretty much using Google Classroom, and that sounds like a really 
nice, uh, I don't know, do you, do you find it to be a, 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 a good platform? Well, um, I think it's, fair, it's, it's fairly simple. I don't, there's not, there's, there's not a lot of functions there. Um, um, I don't, I don't like their chat. Like they don't have like a, a, a place for students to chat. It's only for uploading, uh, like reading assignments or mm -hmm. videos. So for the purpose of uploading like online resources, reading re online, like free resources on the web for students to go over them, I think uh, it's suitable. And um, the assignments, I like that. I, I like it that um, the, uh, they could uh, upload their Google document assignments. Uh, at, you know, Google Documents onto the assignment, and there's it's the screen. And when you pop up the screen, you can act, you can it works as the Google Doc or Google Slide. You know, um, I could give comments, and they they um, they could read it. Um, I like their app. I like their app mm -hmm. because let me explain. Okay. Normally, if students submit assignments. Uh, documents like Word documents, you have to download it and then edit it, give them feedback, and then upload it for them to download again and you know read my comments. But for for Google Classroom, uh, if they submit it via Google document, then everything you know, you don't need to download everything. You can just do it online, and that's what I like about it. But do you need Google Classroom to do that? I mean, can't you just say, like in in uh, Schoology, let's say, I say, uh, yeah. here, give me the link to your document, and then I could work with people on that document. I, because uh, this is my first time trying, uh, you know, using, you know, trying with Schoology. I have not tried it uh, yet, like how... I don't know how it works, you know, you know, submitting Google document to Schoology. So I we might just need a link to the document and, and the okay. person to have it shared with you, uh -huh. if you if you want them to edit it. Okay. I, yeah, I, yeah, I can give it a look and try how, how it works. So I have another option now. Maybe mm -hmm. I could, you know, uh, use Schoology instead of Google Classroom, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it was my first time playing with it, so I'm quite happy with it because um, um, I'm, I'm happy with it apart from a few things. One, I haven't, I think they, they sort of assume that you're going to use, well, they have an enterprise system, so some schools buy into Schoology, and then they have the one that I'm using, which is a free one, and uh, there are a lot of things that don't work in the free one or one of the things is the the connection with Dropbox so there are ideas that you use Dropbox but I, I don't really find Dropbox to I mean, personally frankly I like Google Docs as you know because we work together on a uh, your article for Tesla article okay. yes that, I mean, that's the way I work with my students you know so that it, was wonderful yeah it is. It's great. You know, you, you don't just send off an article to an editor and the editor. I know. It and sends it I'm back. very thankful. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you just work on the fly, which is, yes. I've been doing that. Gosh, I don't know how, for how long. Then the editor also in, uh, in Japan uh -huh. also takes, I, I, when I just, when the article is ready, I just share it with him uh -huh. and um, they're fine. They just take it and put it up online and, at some point, we have to stop using Google Docs and we start using the HTML online. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I mean, uh, you know, that's um, that's the way I've always liked to work with students. Um, Brilliant. You know, I get them to write, and then I yeah, and what what's the other part? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, yeah. So. I, I don't know. I mean, I, if, if that's the only advantage of using Google Classroom is there's a Google Doc connection, 
then you could get that in no matter where you, what you did. You know, you could um, you can you just have to have a, a means for students to give you the link in order to submit it to you. Yes. So, and you have an understanding with them that they would share it with you for editing if yeah. they want your feedback and they want you to work with them on it. Mm -hmm. So. I, I guess I'm comparing it to the um, the LMS that my university uses. You know, um, right now, um, because Google Classroom has an app, like Schoology, it has an app. Mm -hmm. So people, students could uh, work on their assignments on their phones instead of on their computers. And I like the I like the the idea of working. Every anywhere you want mm -hmm. with your with your iPhone. I could check my students' assignment on my iPhone, and um, the 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 elements um, that my university is currently using. They uh, part of it doesn't does not come with an app. So I I guess yeah, that's why I use Google Classroom. Yeah, there seem to be a lot of people in that situation, like, for example, Magali in Ecuador, whom I thought maybe she'll show up. She mentioned that maybe she just sent a message via Schoology that she um, she was planning to come, but they're having some problems that, with the, uh, I don't know, the connection at school. I'm not really sure. But anyway, um, they're using also a, a platform which they're developing. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. That, 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 to me, would be really frustrating. Anything is frustrating for me as a teacher if mm -hmm. I can't take it with me to my next assignment, you know, my next posting, I should say. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh, whatever I do in PB Works, PB Works has been very reliable. You mm -hmm. can't count on that forever. You know, they could pull a rug yeah. from under us and say one month from now, either you back it up or you lose everything. I know. And, I thinking of all the links that you have there and so, you know like a lot of pictures i paste into my web pages are actually hosted in pb works so things would just start falling apart yeah they're they're closing down some of my uh, sites as well i just uh received a notice which that one i should get uh um the one that, that, that i use for my computer assisted language learning course. They said uh -huh. I had to check back within 30 days, otherwise they are gonna. Oh yeah, that, you just have to update. You just have to do something with the site. So, uh, you know, you can go, shall I show you uh, what I do? Let me just go into, let me see. Okay, okay I gotta go and share a screen. Let me see, I just clicked off that. So there, I'll share my, uh, my browser window here. Oh, I clicked. I click on what I want to share and then, okay, here we go. So here's a browser window. This is mm -hmm. um, what we're supposed to talk about tonight or what I, I don't know. This is a, an office hour. It's not really a webinar. Okay. So uh, if I go to uh, pages and files, I guess, pages and files or is it pages and files. Okay. No, I want, that's not what I, oh, I'm looking for workspaces. Sorry. Workspaces. Okay. I click on workspaces. And I go to all my workspaces, 77. Wow, workspaces. 77 of them. Wow, that's so mm -hmm. many. So what you can see here is that when you last changed them. Uh -huh. So it uh, looks like five months ago. Okay, so five months ago. See, I go systematically through these things and I make some updates. So let's take that one for five months ago. Maybe that's a... That's, uh, that's a workshop I did in Brazil TESOL. So what I just go, when I do that, I just go to, uh, there's a whole picture of me and Bobby, and I don't know if you know Mia, how does she pronounce her name? Shimarelli maybe? Uh, do you know her by any chance? She's quite well known in Ayatefo. Anyway, I met her in Brazil. She's a Brazilian lady. So uh, at the bottom of the page, I just keep a little thing that, Oh, I don't know, did I, doesn't seem to be, oh no, sorry, that's not the bottom of the page, those are comments. Okay, here we go. The site was last visited and altered by adding this text on September 22nd, 2019. So what I just do 
I just keep that note at the bottom of each page. And to update it, I just go down to the bottom of that page and I put in today's date. So this is, uh, what have we got here? February 28th. 28th, thank you. 28th, that's the last 2020. day. 2020. Oh, 2020, yeah, okay. okay. So you can do anything there, but just by updating it, now it's going to be current. So you just have to keep track just by looking at your workspaces. Going back to my workspaces now, I just thought I clicked on that. Workspaces, all of my workspaces. So that workspace should be now current. Um, so that I don't need to give it up. <laughs> no, you don't need to give it up. All you have to do is make some change to it. Mm -hmm. So I just put a note at the bottom of the front pages that say, I, you know, I, I last visited the site. That's, but you can change anything. You can change a, you know, it could make any change. And if you do that, then they refresh you for another year. So okay. uh, I just can't okay. keep track of it. So everything is updated from uh, four months ago. So in another uh, seven months, I suppose, I should get back in there and, and do Here's Don. Don is arrived. Yay. Yay, Don. Don. Don Carroll, Abu Fletcher. Abu means father, and Fletcher is his first son. So people in Arab countries, where, where I met Don, I met Don in Oman, uh -huh. and probably about the 1990 or something like that. I, I don't remember. I was there for 10 years from 85 to 95, and Don came along after uh, somewhere in there. So um, anyhow, uh, he, he, and Oman is an Arab country, and his son Fletcher was born somewhere in there. I can't remember. Um, but um, anyhow, he calls himself Abu Fletcher because that's, that's the, uh, what people call themselves. I would be Abu Glenn. That's the name of my first son. So um, that's a father usually calls himself father of, and the, and the son calls himself Ibn something. Like my son would be called Ibn Matz. Ibn. Ibn, yeah, Ibn means son of. So you see a lot so, of. So is my mic un unmuted now? Yes. We got your mic. Okay. Yay. Yeah. No video, Thank but. You for your voice. No video. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not sure why, but uh, yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. We're cool. Let me and let me stop this share here. I was just uh, talking with Jane here. There we go. Okay, we're back into the the three screens here. At least in my view, it's three screens. I'm not sure what it comes out with on the Zoom recording. Yes. But I have, I have you as a large screen across the whole desktop with our small screens on the side. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's, it, since I'm recording it, um, what, what, the, what Zoom does is it follows the speaker. So mm -hmm. uh, you can change that on your, in your view. You can change... Okay. And I don't really know what this is recording. It could be recording the speaker. And then when someone else speaks, right. that, that sound goes to that speaker. So, Well, I've actually made several frame grabs, uh, screen grabs, during the iTutor uh, Zoom because it was interesting to see the way the four people in the screens were interacting with each other. That's something that seemed interesting to me. Well, hey, what, I, what do you look at? And, were you in Zoom or on Facebook? Well, I guess they were showing us. A you were, I'm, see, I'm, I'm gesturing here, but I realize you can't see my gestures. Uh, yeah. It was, it was the uh, watch party. Yeah. So that was the same place that I was making my comments. I actually hope those comments weren't publicly, <laughs> publicly available to. <laughs> to I, I copied them. I put them to a file. <laughs> no, I, I just thought I, was I saying, might blog them. It might be. Considered sort of negative to the people on iTunes, or I don't know. No, it's I, not. I, Don, I would love you to. I, I would like to see you do this. <laughs> I, I definitely don't do stuff like that. And I know. I, I, I couldn't be that person. I really couldn't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we just watched an ITDI. Um, uh, they, they, they broadcast on Facebook. I brought yeah. it up in Facebook. I announced it to people in this group. We're right now. You're in a uh, in a course uh, uh, how to 
create and use a blended classroom. And um, so that's the, we're having an office hour right now. You're quite welcome to join us in the office hour. There you are. We see Don now. There we go. Oh, it's still kind of quite cold there in Japan. Yeah, it is. It is yeah. In Japanese houses are sort of the same inside and outside. Yeah. Yeah, well, Don, good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> hey, Don. 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 <laughs> yeah, thank that, you, thank you. That's as close as I'm going to get. All right. I was expecting yeah. gloves, but anyway. Okay. <laughs> that's really good to see you. And uh, so, well, uh, this course is, um, um, it's, it was put on, it, it, I was an English language specialist this last month, which was been a real gas and they added on an e-learning component to it so I set up this course which is kind of fun so uh, it, it's kind of in a way like uh, EVO Minecraft MOOC in that I was setting it up in uh, PB Works except I added a layer of Schoology to it and Schoology was something that I had learned about in the, in the uh, EVO sessions and but I hadn't really come to grips with it, so I, I it, it now is in a Schoology course, and the, the interesting thing for us, I think, is that I think that could possibly be a way to run EVO Minecraft MOOC 2021, because that's what I mean. This is what this whole course is about: is setting up the environments that will enable people to work together. And I detected some chat amongst in, in Discord or wherever it was. We had so many different spaces that people were interacting with. I mean, some people really liked Discord. Some people were in Facebook. Others were in groups IO. For whatever reasons, a couple of people weren't in Facebook. So we had a lot of trouble connecting all these uh, these spaces. But I don't think anybody could object to signing up to Schoology and, you know, being a, being in a place where you could, I mean, you can make announcements and things like that. And even Twitter, actually, I'm discovering that Twitter, especially from T, this uh, uh, lady in Thailand who's forced now to teach a course in a blended learning environment because all of a sudden the classes have been declared that they don't meet. So she has to set up a blended learning environment, but she's actually using Twitter to communicate with her students. I, know, I think Jane might have seen that she put the school event, she made a hashtag for it, and it's got lots of pictures that you go to that, you go to the Twitter search on that hashtag, and you see you know, lovely uh, photos of the event. So um, anyhow, um, I think that could be a possible solution for EVO Minecraft Book 2021, which is our project for, mm -hmm. so I don't know. Uh, now you see that as a kind of, I don't know anything about schoology, or I want to say schoology, but it's schoology. Mm -hmm. Schoology. Yeah. yeah. Um, Double O. I, I don't know anything about it other than kind of what I've seen, um, just quickly glancing, glancing at it. It's is it a platform where you're putting multiple different things? Like you, you can put up a video, you can put up a um, image, you can put up, or is it simply a, an environment that you talk to each other? Well, that's one of its advantages. You can set up um, uh, forums where people can talk to one another and you can make announcements, but I'm, Actually, you could make announcements on Twitter, but you you can, if people got into Schoology, they could communicate, everyone would be in the same space and they can communicate with each other through the forums. And right. then, but as we have it now, people can do their thing in Discord, groups IO if you want to be there, right. um, and Facebook. But the, the thing is we need, I think we need something to transcend Facebook. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to take an example of, you know, just something that I do. I do the visual thing there. I post photos. Um, mm -hmm. Like, what would be a means for posting a photo so that everybody is seeing that? I see. I yes. guess that's, that's almost like a tag. 
it, almost mm -hmm. like my test for does the platform work. Like I understand in Discord, you can actually post photos there. Yes, you can yes. Post a video in Discord in the sort of chat sections. Yes. Yeah. Um, I you can. It, it has many different ways of posting. Now, there are uh, assignments which aren't. I think very friendly to videos. There are you can make a a post as as an administrator. I can make a page on that page. I can definitely put a video or or I can put an image. Uh, there are some there are different kinds of materials you can add, and some of them I haven't really worked out how to get. I mean, like announcements. I'm making announcements, but I can't really get the thing I'm trying to front up on the announcement. It seems to. I don't know, Jane, I don't know what you see when you look at, at the front yeah. page, but if you look at the page which ends in materials, I don't see uh, the, yeah. here, let me just show it to you. Sometimes I, how, how about this, can Squology, can you have multiple people who are signed up as the teachers? You could. Yes. So in that way, like everybody could be putting stuff on on uh, areas that are re that are uh, restricted for teachers. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, here's my view and you can see that there's this uh, there's this uh, picture here on what's called a page and then there's an announcement over here. So if I go to announcements uh, updates that's the next tab down. So that announcement right there is if it opens, there it is, okay. Um, that announcement, it's coming up. It's going to be the next thing down here. For some reason, I'm kind of slow. I guess I'm still working off my phone. Yeah, okay, that's the problem. So here we go. In the announcement, you can see an image. And uh, other. there's another announcement. I put a video up a couple of days ago. But, but when I look at the site that everybody goes to, uh, which is materials. I don't see those in my view of the announcement. So uh, that's that's what I'm saying. I haven't really worked out in Schoology what you can post, where you can get this. What you're looking for is this, right? This is the there's a picture there, and um, yeah, I guess some some sense that again, like if you have a forum, you post. Uh, a picture or just some, you know, some visual mm -hmm. that, uh, that is then visible to all the members of the community. Yeah, I just created a page here. Uh, it's loading. Here we go. So uh, you have different things you can add. In this one, it looks like you can bring in a content, and the content can be image or media. Okay. But a lot of them only have this one. And the link too, yeah. Yeah, or that, a link. that's a problem. Yeah. Let's see. Or this one there. Here you can bring in a file, but those files don't really necessarily stick in the like they do in the page. So I haven't really worked all this out. I'm a little bit new to Schoology myself, but what I, I know what you're looking for is this kind of thing, and I, I wouldn't say really. Um, I mean, you know. You, you could continue working however you like to work, you know, in Discord or whatever. It's just that what we're lacking right now is a space that transcends all the, the Discord, the Facebook. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. There's, you know, there's a, um, a kind of top level of connection. Uh, yeah, where everybody knows what, yeah. where one hand knows what all the other fingers are doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Uh, and one thing I like about this is that it works really well, I think, with PB Works, and which is where I've got everything, as you know. So right. whether or not that's friendly, uh, at least everything is there. So basically, it's a what would you call it a uh, uh, a, a master uh, an expert system? You call it an expert system. There's there's something there that's kind of like the manual and everything there has a pointer. So that is, once you once you set up, say, a space like this, I'm going to shift over to one of my work, workshop spaces. These table of contents here, each of them points to something. So like, for example, I'm going to start talking about 
do-it-yourself learning management systems, you can click there and I can give everyone the link to that place that I want them to look at because it's set up in a table of contents. And you can do the same in Google Docs because you can insert a table of contents also in Google Docs and they'll each thing in your table of contents will have a link and you can give people that link and you can point them right to a place where you want them to go in the document. So in Schoology, I can do the same thing. Ooh, there we go. Okay, so I can go here and I can say, um, let's see, here we go. The course is described here. So go there and people can click there and they can see how the course is described. So that's to a front page or a, a main page, but I could also point them to, um, I do this often, quick instructions for, no, not quick instructions, so I usually I need to give them the step-by-step -step instructions for getting into the Schoology course. So I can point people right there and they can see how, because a lot of people get messed up at that point. They don't, it's not a funny thing that, the, the, these are the quick instructions. You, uh, you get an account and you uh, in, then enroll. Well, that link doesn't go anywhere until you enroll, but you'd use that to enroll and uh, but people can't work that out because they really have to have the step-by-step -step instructions. So when you you have to click on courses, then you, etc. So actually, yeah. it was it was I was surprised at how simple. Once once I understood that I was I actually sent a message just before I logged on here saying I wasn't able to uh, get into uh, Schoology, mm -hmm. and the reason was I was trying to log in instead of uh, setting up an account. Uh huh. Yeah. So, and I mean, just like, well, I think that distinction would be simply lost on on my students. Interesting yes. thing with my video here, I realize now that like my light has gone, and I'm wondering, ah, what is that? And I realize it came back on. It's, it's the light from the screen. The screen. In ah, front of yeah. Me that's illuminating me. Okay. When as long as we keep your talking, view, you're okay. That's the. Yeah. Right. Let's see, can I modify that a bit? Hold on a second. Yeah, okay. So anyway, as far as getting into Schoology, if you want to enroll, then you can find the step-by-step -step instructions. And um, I think I've got links all over the place to that. But I don't, I don't know if that's any better. I've got to play by tilting my... Uh, ceiling light up or down. No, it's okay. We're all experiencing nighttime wherever we happen to be. Only Jane has a well-lit room. She does. I mean, really. I need dim my light. <laughs> I mean, it's like that's that's kind of what I'm always kind of looking at when I when I think of the videos. It seems just sort of awful, awful lighting all the time. Yeah, I can I can do better. Yeah. I mean, I've got lights. Of, I've got lights in front of me. Kind of rim, Rembrandt thing going on here, you know, with half of my face completely dark yes. and the other half bright. There you go. Yeah. I, I heard a story about that where one of these Renaissance painters was commissioned to do a portrait of a princess. And of course, you know, he painted in this style and, and that's how the portrait came out. And the princess was horrified. He said, what do you think? Half of my face is black and half of my face is white. What's wrong with you? Like, mm -hmm. I'll put do, your this, head. do this again. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, anyway. So that's where um, one of them came out naked and the other one came out with fully clothed, or which princess was that? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get the stories mixed up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, um, you know, what I was interested in when I was looking at this Zoom was, like, I've... I've I've been sort of anti talking head formats. Mm. Oh, me too. I know, hate where it. it's quite common, you know, and this well, this is what we got right now, you know. I mean it's it's talking heads. Um oh, but at least but, we're all talking. I thought you yeah, meant the but, talking but, head but, is pontificating for everybody else. No, no, I meant in the sense that visually what you have on the screen is people's heads arranged mm -hmm. into little rectangles often around the screen, sometimes like in that Zoom, it was the, you know, the rectangular boxes. Um, 
But it occurred to me as I was taking the screen captures of various moments of that, that like right now, if I'm looking at this, you know, I could see that Jane's look, leaning in, that she's looking up into a corner, which is into, I assume, where my video is. And Vance, you're looking slightly downward. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I can see that there is actual interaction among the people, among the boxes. So they're not just talking heads, but um, they're interacting mm. faces as well. So th there's more there than I was initially willing to concede. Mm -hmm. I, I just made you host, Don, so you could share a screen if you wanted and be more than a talking head. I, I've moused over Jane and for some reason or other. I don't see how I can, I mean, I've got, when I mouse over Don, I get a more. And when I mouse over Jane, I don't. So I don't know how to deal with that. How I'm not sure what that, what that oh, here we go. I see a more over here. No? No. I'm not sure how it, what happens here. Okay. Anyway, I was able to make you a host, though, Don. I'd, so you could uh, play around with this if you want. I mean, you can, uh, at the bottom you'll, uh, of the screen, you should find a share screen. So if you want to be more than a talking head, you could share something with us if you want on your computer. I'm not, I'm not sure I've seen, uh, seeing that share. Uh, you have to mouse down to the bottom of your Zoom screen. And you should. Oh, I see. A, you know, yeah. I do see it. Share, share screen. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to be orga more organized than that. Yeah. Uh, to have something like ready to say, I know where it is and let me go get it instead of like having to, to yeah. uh, shuffle yeah, but, all through. But it's, it's more than a talking head. So. Yeah. You, well, I, I just mean it. Says, I mean, that's true. Mm -hmm. Now, there are other formats I've seen that um, you have in the center is something. It can be a document and then arranged around it are the talking heads. Mm -hmm. now, I, I guess, you know, I'm using a talking head in a very generic sense. I'm really saying visually what is there. It is a rectangle with shoulders and head in it, mm -hmm. um, you know, as opposed to, um, well, for example, let's say, what if you were showing me a video and uh -huh. we were just commenting without, I mean, just in talk, uh, commenting about it. I suppose this is more, I guess this is more what we're, what we're looking at. Here's a video. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, in that sense, this is really like, yeah, sort of, uh, so I have to stop it. How do I stop it? <laughs> Click on it one more time. Huh? Click on it? Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> Very good, Jane. Thank you. Okay. Okay, there we go. You know, yeah. Oh, no, a, stop. There's, there's studies. There are people. Never mind. I just cut it. Okay. Studies or lecture. Sorry, Jane. And they were saying there's mm -hmm. this, like, person talking mode and there's this con cons academy mode where where he, there's a black screen and you just scribble your lectures on it and right. there's this one where there's a teacher with uh with a with the board and writing and they were comparing what like what is best for blended learning for videos for blended learning online yeah, it, that's, it's, it's interesting. Well, let me give you an example of something that uh, we had tried, like in uh, CA, people often, the CA analysts, they get together and they do what's called a data session. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you start off, it's always kind of the same, you start off by looking at a short segment of video. And as you're doing that, you're looking at a transcript that somebody has already prepared, just to kind of get you into, into the data. Mm -hmm. And then after that, people typically pick like a target line. They start working on that from a certain point. Okay. Now, there's been attempts to do online data sessions, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, we're scattered all over Japan or even all over Asia. Mm -hmm. And there'd be a real advantage to be able to do that. But uh, the couple that I've participated in, I don't think they've really f thought about the technology involved. So, for example, what it typically is, everybody is still sitting there with a physical piece of paper transcript 
And then there's just a bunch of video boxes of people's head that talk about it. And it occurred to me that somehow we don't actually need to see people, what we need on the screen, like right there dead center in the screen would be the transcript and some ability to highlight lines of it or draw arrows in that sense. Think of like 10 people working directly on the transcript that's there as the central uh, analytic object and the people just sort of here maybe on the side but instead it was the people and the actual analytic object was not part of the um, not part of the online mm -hmm. uh, aspect at all and that seemed just sort of a uh, horse before the cart or cart before the horse <laughs> sort of problem. Yeah, I see your point. So I had suggested various sorts of, uh, let's see, I think there's just, there's an app that's maybe just called Whiteboard or Online Whiteboard. And in the sense you can draw on it, but you can also post like pictures. I mean, you don't just have to draw on it. You can post something. And I thought, well, you know, why couldn't we post a, uh, you know, a graph, uh, uh, an image of mm -hmm. the transcript? Uh -huh. And then people could simply reach in with the tools and, you know, make an arrow next to something or underline something in a color. I think join it, join it, this other, I, I, I don't know. It, um, are we able to, um, for Zoom, are we able to uh, pull up a document where all the participants could use a different colored pen to highlight the document? Do you think Vance? Zoom? Yeah, I because I know JoinNet is is uh, JoinNet has that function where mm -hmm. the participants could all work on one screen, and um, I had like um, I had a group of kids. Um, they took our online teaching section and we asked them to draw, like three kids draw on one page. No, I think this that's, is what they're talking. Really, yeah. what we need yeah. something like that. Yeah. So perhaps I, I would suggest join it. They have that that function because we had we had to assign kids like okay, Mark, you use blue, um, um, Jane, you use gray, and so that uh, we know which person you know is doing the job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm looking around the tools here. I don't see such a thing, but uh, I've used um, like Illuminate, for example. Uh -huh. uh, has that and I think also Adobe Connect yes. there there's a whiteboard and you get to tools on the whiteboard you can put stuff in the whiteboard you can mm -hmm. annotate you can draw on the whiteboard yeah so well, I'm quite I'm quite certain these tools are out there and like already there functioning but I think the problem is the conceptualization of what do you do when you're getting together online I, I think People think of it as a meeting. You know, uh -huh. it's just the same as sitting around a table. Mm -hmm. mm. And I think that whole concept of what you're doing uh, during online on interaction sort of needs to be pushed to the side. Mm -hmm. A new metaphor, mm -hmm. you know, proposed. Oh, I see your <laughs> point because that's exactly what we were like working on when we were teaching kids online because <clears> we <throat> wanted them to be engaged in learning. So we we had to create like worksheets uh, beforehand so that all of the students can work on that worksheet all at once. Should be yeah. complete, job, com complete task instead of just um, sit and listen to us or repeat after us. So that's yeah. one way. Well, I like that idea. You know, you know, they're all doing something together. Yeah. Um, Online. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that seems like perfectly suited to a CLIL style of lesson as well. So. Mm -hmm. As I said, well, you know, one reason I'm here, I'm kind of, um, I have a new course that I'm going to be taking over this year. It's just called the English language. And in the past, it was taught by our sort of resident linguist. And for him, the class was a lot of like, history of English or phonology of English. It was a sort of linguistics light, uh, English history light. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make it a little more active on the part of, he taught a basic lecture style. Mm -hmm. And I would like it to not be lecture style. And I would like to, I was really thinking more something like flipped learning mm -hmm. in the sense that they 
look at the tremendous uh, YouTube resources mm -hmm. that I can point them to, and then we do activities based on those in class. Uh -huh. um, they have very, you know, Japan is thought of as a country of high tech, mm -hmm. but in some ways the Japanese people are enormously low tech. You know, they're, uh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe half of my students do not have a computer. Oh. And I mean, everybody has a smartphone, uh -huh. but the idea of a computer or how many know how to use Word. Uh -huh. Basically, I have to teach, like in my writing class, I have to teach them how to use Word, what are the basic formatting things, or what, what mm -hmm. does a page of English look like. Mm -hmm. um, and these things were all quite surprising to me when mm -hmm. I first came to Japan, because I had this image of everybody being, everybody being fairly mm -hmm. high-tech in their daily life. Mm -hmm. So, so I, Don, I, would, Don, I, would, so I, you, I think... More high-tech than Japan. Don, so I think... You can use Schoology for your, your class. To well, upload. the thing is, like, I, I'm trying to imagine getting 25, 20, 25 students even, like, onto this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can imagine spending four weeks just getting everybody sorted out but, with, with their problem. Like, I couldn't sign up this, I couldn't do this, you know, I couldn't oh, do that. Yeah. But then, you know, you said they, they might not have computers at home, but they all have um, cell, uh, mobile phones and... Yeah, well, they do, yeah. They could work on, work on the, uh, the assignments uh, using their phones. And yeah. also, if you're only posting videos, then you post it in Schoology, and then they could view the, pho the, the, the videos on their phones as well. Well, that's, I mean, I, I feel like I do need some way of, um, like, it, it's, it's honestly in these, in this, uh, this, uh, what's the phrase I want to use is it? In this era, to have to write down on a piece of paper the web address that everybody should go and look at. I mean, that's, that's really dark ages technology. Because <laughs> then, of course, everybody types it, mistypes it, and can't find it. So there, there needs to be some place that they can all go and they just click on a link and get there. So maybe Schoology is that place. Um, I think YoTeach would be that place. I don't know. What's that? I think YoTeach would be that place. Let me just, while I've got this screen up, I just, this is a Google Doc. How do you, how do you spell that? Is that just oh, like let, me show, let me show it to you in a second. Hang on. Okay. So this, this is a document that uh, Jane is putting hearts on. She's doing the, uh, the, the thing right there, in the, right there in the document. You see what she's doing there? Yeah. Okay. So basically, I didn't really set this up as, to, as a palette for Jane. Oh, no, she's got to It's still there. <laughs> oh, my God. What are we going to do with all these hearts? Anyway, so you were saying that you wanted a space. I mean, this is a Google Doc, but it could be a Google Slideshow where you can draw on it or, uh, you know, things. So you, Jane happens to be a shared participant in this document. You could be. And so if you were, then we could all write on this one document here, right here right. On, on the screen. That was well, one thing you brought up. Let's see if, if we then well, go. Act hmm? Well, actually, there's a, there's, um, there's a button where... Um, like a tool would pop up that allows me to draw in. Yeah, in right. yeah, yeah. You can set it. You can do a drawing. You can insert a drawing. I think. Oh no! It, I'm I'm saying not on the document, but Zoom. This is uh -huh. Zoom. This is from Zoom. This is well. You're looking at a screen share uh, in Google Docs. Mm -hmm. well, I know this seems like old, old technology, but. Must have been at least 10 years ago. I set up a web page for a master's course I was teaching, and we had the syllabus. It was uh, you know, set up as a, as it was done all in Word, which you just then converted to HTML and posted up to some space. But anyway, uh, you know, it was just a table, and each week there was, you know, one side of the table, it's like what we we're going to talk about, and on the uh, oh. right hand, uh, cell would be uh, links 
to various things. You know, and it would be a link to an assignment. It would be a, a link to a, a website, a link to a bibliography, some, something like that. But it was simply a document uh -huh. that everybody looked at online. They probably thought of it as a website, but, you know, I mean, um, um, I guess the thing is there was no technology involved for the people looking at it. It was quite literally a website that the first day of class they saw bookmarked and from that point on they would simply go to that website and click on a link so somehow minimal minimal technological requirements on the part of the users uh -huh. Vance can 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 I share my screen yes sure okay. well, we uh, that's why I was trying if to make you, you a if host. You, if you could stop sharing. Let okay. Me. Can you share it anyway? Oh. I like that phrase, you know, can you please stop sharing? Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's always thank you for sharing, you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, now you we got your screen. Look, um, there's, there's one, oh, because there, there's a, like a button where I could, oh, this one, this one right here. That allows me to do this. Yeah. And like draw. Okay. And then this is, I think this is what Don is talking about. Yeah. If, if he's, um, if, if we could all draw on it, if we can all yeah. hit it, that's and why. And type on it. Yeah. Can we do now that? You're simply, you're doing that with your mouse or you're doing it with a so, trackpad. Don, Don, curious. please. Try it if you, you know, if you go to, you can also do it. Go to where? Um, if you uh, move your mouse on the, on, on top, you would see this. I'm moving my it, mouse on top. What, what do you mean? I'm saying you are, via, you are viewing Jane's screen yes. and view options. And we, we can see right Jane on. writing on the screen. And yeah, but I can't write on it. Yeah, I can't either. Here, here, here. Kind of, here. Where? Um, are you, can you see my screen? Uh, we see your screen. And um, right here on the upper left. Upper left. Well, you should be able to draw an arrow to point to that. Oh, <laughs> let me do that. Oh, okay. I, I have to show you where it, it's here. Well, how, how can we, you're, you're sharing a screen on your computer. So how can we draw on the screen on your computer? I can no, you're, you're, we are all sh we are all drawing on the this screen. No, only you are drawing. Yeah, on it says it says you are viewing oh. Jane. No, uh, but Jane's but I was screen. drawing Vance's screen. You oh, that's draw true. on that's my true. screen because you were sharing the document. No, no, no. I don't need you. Don't need to share share um, your your document with me. I can also um, draw it. Ah, oh, I don't see how I can draw on your screen. Right. It, it, there's a pop-up, um, like icons, a list of icons, and where there's this pen. If you click on it, you'll no. Nope. You'll see this. Do you see this? Nope. No, I don't um, see anything like that. On my move screen your, either. Move your. Do you know where you you could uh, mute your mic? Yes. Okay, it you know the a uh, few icons onto the right. There's a pen type of marker. Uh, I don't, no. I don't see a pen. No. no. Oh wait, wait, wait! I see on your screen. I see. On my screen, you can see it. Can you pull up your yours? No, I because I can't impact your screen. I can't. Oh, I can't. Right. No. Right. Um, or it's like a a button. On the left, I, I think I need to do a screen capture for for this so that you can know. Yeah, but how can we activate buttons on your screen? No, um, okay. Mm, perhaps when you do when you uh, let me stop sharing. When you share your screen, I can show you how to how I I was drawing on your screen. Okay, let me share the screen so I can show um, I can show Don Yo Teach. Okay, so here's my screen. Oh. Um, let's see. If I went to um, EVO Minecraft MOOC, uh, 
no, 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 sorry. What was it? Missions for Minecraft. Missions for Minecraft. So, this is the Missions for Minecraft is coming up. And in the sidebar on the right hand side, if you can you see Yo Teach there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, That's how I've written it. <laughs> yeah. So, Yo Teach. No. Um, I think I've set up one, you have to have a password there, it's uh, EVOMC, maybe 20, EVOMC20, I believe, and it, it said, yeah, there you go, okay, so that's just a space where anybody can write once they get into that system, and um, it, it, you can set it up yourself. Uh, maybe a better place to show you would be over in uh, in the course that I've just set up. Um, okay, so in the in the blended learning classroom course, I've set up some mnemonics. So mnemonics are really good. For example, if you want people to come to, you can use tinyurl to set up your own mnemonic. So if, as long as students can remember tinyurl.com slash then you can put your own mnemonic afterwards. So if you have people go to tinyurl.com slash blended2020, they'll come onto this one. Now, in uh, the back channel, I guess once they're here, then they can get to your, they can go to the back channel. So the back channel for this course, and the, the password is blended, B-L-E-N-D-E-D. So I was having some interaction here, but nothing, nothing lately. Okay, so, isn't, so I mean, I'll say right away that I like the simplicity of what's there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a very uncluttered appearance there. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, write a message. You know, there it is, right on the box. Uh, if you there want to communicate with your class, if they can reach that space, you can put in a link that they can go to, so they could yeah. copy that link. Unfortunately, the link itself isn't hyperlinked, but uh, if- But they have to, they have to like cut, uh, copy and paste it? Oh, I did have a, here's a, here's a tinyurl.com tiny slash yo blended. That will get you to the space. So if I've set up a mnemonic for that, so if you type in tinyurl.com slash yo blended, you'll come onto this, page and you can write on it and if you can tell your students go to this page tinyurl.com slash yo blended or whatever you set up yours to be then they can reach this space and then you can have there a link that they should go to so they don't it's nice if you can communicate with a whole class face to face what they should do in that class in a Either what, one way to do it is you set up a PB Works space or a Schoology space or something where they they all know where to go. I didn't really find Blackboard to be very good for that because Blackboard is always changing. But uh, basically, yeah. if you have I, your I own space. All of these learning systems to be too complex to even consider using with my with my students. So in that sense. They're designed to be very flexible and have a lot of abilities, but then that also makes them very complex to, to navigate. Well, what you need is one space. What, my, my PB Works class space was vancesclass.pbworks.com. So any students I had, I just told them, go to vancesclass.pbworks.com. They all got to know that link. So they could just vancesclass.pbworks.com. And where, whatever class I was in, that would come up because I always made sure that at that space, the thing that came up first was the thing that my students were supposed to be doing right then. So an, another way to do it is to set up something like Yo Teach, where you just tell them to type that in and they go to that, they come right to here and they see this and that's where they go. So that's the start of the lesson. So. Uh, if you, there's something in particular you want them to do, you just need to have a, a one easy click, same every time. Go to that space, and then they uh, they can do the activity for the day, no matter how complicated the link is. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to end up building this, this course kind of week by week. Mm -hmm. uh, I do mine day by day. Well, <laughs> I, I, I teach one, one 90 minute lesson a week. That's it. Uh -huh. oh, there's, okay. there's 15 of those. That's the extent of the course. Uh -huh. Now, um, a further thing is that I'm only going to be teaching two more years and then I retire. Uh -huh. So I'll be teaching the course this one time and the next time. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's got to be simple in the sense of not really preparing students for the future and in some ways not investing too much energy mm. into myself. Of course, I won't be teaching uh, other than one more year. Mm -hmm. um, well, this, how, about, how about this? It, like, mm -hmm. if I were simply going to do a web page as I'd done before, mm -hmm. um, where it just says, it is literally a syllabus. There's like week one, mm -hmm. these three videos, click and watch. Mm -hmm. Um, where would you recommend as a space to put a website? Well, my go-to space is pvworks.com. It's just very flexible. It's, uh, you, you saw it in, uh, uh, in uh, missions. I, for I, I, I guess, guess what I'm really thinking about is again, what I've done before is I simply type the whole thing up in word. You can do that. You can make a click. Google doc. A Google you doc click. could be your space. Oh, well, yeah, that's, maybe that would be the simplest thing. And then in that case, you want to make a tiny URL to it so that uh, they can go to tinyurl, tinyurl.com slash Don's class or something like that, you okay. know, or Abu Fletcher just, or whatever. Now, why, why do they need that as opposed to simply The a, link? It's a complex yeah. link. So, okay. Uh, let me show well, you how to do that. that. That's the thing. You know, like the web page I had before, it is like any other web page. There are no links. You simply give them that website and then they yeah. are on. If your they website. have the website, not a problem. But I'll just show you tiny URL. What if I wanted my students to start on this page? And I just copy that. I go to tinyurl.com. Uh, let's see. And I like tiny, there are, there are lots of shorteners, but I like tiny URL because you can make the, uh, the space. So whatever your, uh, you can make the, the link be what you want it to say. So I type oh, that. I see what you mean, right, right. Yeah, I type that, uh, uh, that link that I just had, that long link right there that nobody can remember. Yeah, and exactly, then, I got in it. In this space, yeah. I can put, uh, I can put Abu Fletcher here. Right, right. Okay, so if you want them to go to tinyurl.com, Abu Fletcher, then they'll always land on this page. Okay. And that's just a good way to get people started. So all you have to do, if that's your Google Doc, then all you have to do is just update the Google Doc for your class for that day so that when they go to that space, they know exactly what to do. Okay. And you can set up a table of contents in Google Docs, which will point to different classes, or different days or whatever, you know, so if someone misses a class, you can say, uh, go to like, like the page I just had up. I don't know if I've still got it here, but uh, that's, a, that's how we're setting up our, this one right here. Now, by the way, I try to use Google Doc with my grad student mm -hmm. for, uh, she was producing a set of uh, questionnaires for the she, uh, she's doing her MA thesis on volunteer Japanese and foreign language tutoring groups in our area. Mm -hmm. And she had produced a questionnaire. She produced one in English and Vietnamese and Chinese and Spanish and Portuguese, all the various languages. But uh, we wanted to work through the English one first to say, what are the types of questions that you should have? So I set that up as a Google Doc and so that we could both work mm -hmm. uh, jointly on that. Mm -hmm. But what I found, and I don't, I didn't understand why that was the case. It's like I'd edit something, and then it would end up as a whole separate uh, doc. And after a while, there'd be like fifteen various variation docs appearing instead of one. And it was, it was actually impossible to keep track of what was the most recent 
Yeah, because you're, you're not working on the same document. I, I've seen this before. What do you do? It's because you're, it was, each of you is making a copy of it. Yeah, something like that. And then yeah. you end up working on the copy. You, you just work on the one document. You don't need a copy. Yeah. You know, the nice thing about Google Docs, this, this is the one Jane and I are using. Uh, where is it here? You can go to uh, the file and you can see the version history here. So this is your version history. So you don't need copies of the document. Copies of the document are already built into Google Docs. All right. So my connection is a little bit slow here today because for some reason my router wasn't working. I went over to my cell phone, so I don't know why it's taking so long. But you should see uh, a list of all the versions of this document. So you can go back a year if you want or two years or yeah, just swimming around here. but. Uh, but basically, under version history, <laughs> non-responsive. Okay, so anyway, never mind. I'll just anyway. That's how you get it. You go to you go there, and you can see the version history. Uh, I'm just going to pop out of the version history. Oh, snap! Nothing happened. Okay. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so pleased with my new fiber optic cable installed yesterday. <laughs> Congratulations. Normally, I'm pleased with my service too, but today uh, it wasn't working, and it just remembered that I, I switched over to my cell phone because earlier today I wasn't getting it. But mm -hmm. another thing I was going to show you was that there's a table of contents here. So the table of contents, uh, that's the table of contents, and it works on, uh, on the headings. So as soon as something pops up here and shows us headings, Dan, how, how do you create a, how do you create the table of contents? Good question. Okay. A, did you do it manually or is no, it, no, no, no. It's a it's a tool. It's a it's a widget. You just oh, insert. Okay. okay. Here's the table of contents. The only thing you have to do with the table of contents is you have to keep refreshing it. But if I can get insert. The work here, insert, oh, at the bottom of insert, okay. table of contents right there. Oh, I see. So you just choose which one you want. One of them uh -huh. has an outline with numbers, and the other one has just links like you see here. So oh, you I choose see. that one, and, mm -hmm. uh, and then you have to keep refreshing it. Click on the table of contents. There's a little circle that comes up here. Uh -huh. And if anyone changes any of the headings and you click on that circle, uh -huh. update the table of contents that it refreshes it with all the headings but pb works does that dynamically pb works you just change a heading and it's all automatically refreshed but with this uh -huh. one you have to go in and you have to uh, refresh the table of contents from the headings okay, and if we can good. see any headings down here if i can go down here and see headings which i don't see oh here we go there's something uh -huh. coming okay so that program details right there you can see uh -huh. is heading one Oh, okay. And the best of EVO, well, it's normal text, but uh -huh. Thursday, that's heading one. So, uh -huh. no, okay. So, at some point, we get, here we go, live on-site presentations as a heading two. So, uh -huh. that's going to be under heading one. So, okay. you, you set the headings uh, according to how you want the outline to go. Uh -huh. That's the same in PB Works too. Okay. You set the text. Now, some people use the headings to format. They uh -huh. like the heading style, so they make it heading something, and but it has no function in the document. Yeah. The only mm -hmm. function in the document is when you use a table of contents mm -hmm. or, or you use bookmarks. Then those those headings can be reached through that. But uh, mm -hmm. and you want to avoid using that as a formatting tool because that just confounds your when you do set it up as a as linkable tables of contents. Then if you've got people playing, making headings, tables of, you know, head, uh, using headings as formatting tools, and it just messes things up. Yeah. You have to go back and Thank change you. those. Uh, I've, and, been I've been listening to you well at the same time. I was kind of searching around for the syllabus, and I've only found it as a word doc rather than the HTML. I, I think I've now lost the space that that was in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as uh, displaying what that mm -hmm. what that looked like, you can enter uh, your syllabus into a Google Doc, and it will come out. I guess 
I get my, I just keep coming, kind of coming back to the idea of, uh, let me, hold on, let me get back, back into us. Okay. Um, coming back into the idea of why have something inside anything? Why, why nest anything in anything else? So again, to take the example of my, my syllabus, it wasn't anywhere. It was simply something I had uploaded to a uh, free, free web space. I don't remember what that was, like 10, 10 years ago. Um, but you didn't link anywhere to go to that. Again, it was a case of, of just having the website, as you say. Um, but let's say when you talk about putting something in Google Doc, well, it's contained within Google Doc. You have to go to Google uh, Docs and then go into the document there's at least two levels there as opposed to you click on a link and you go directly into a log. You don't see anything outside of the document. There, there is no container per se. So like mm -hmm. even, even looking at this, well, I mean, you know, what, what you have on the screen now, only part of it is your course. Then we have all the tools at the top. We have, the title of the document, we have of the uh, the address that's at the very top, but then all along the top are all of the uh, icons having to do with this or that, how the PP works and tiny or all. And yeah, this the, is Google uh, Docs, uh huh? Yeah, I mean, in the sense that um, if you have the web page, when you go to if you go to a company's web page, for example, there's nothing but that company web page there. Mm -hmm it's not contained within something. Well, it could be. I mean, the, the, there's nothing contained. It's all linking out linearly. So uh, here, this link right here at the top, if you take that and copy it, you could, for some reason it's not copying, okay. Uh, if you take that and... Or if you go to share. Okay. Copy it right there, okay. So I've got a copy now. And if I want to set up my corporate web page, I could say, I could put a start here button and I link the start here to that thing that I just copied. So the people inside the corporate web page don't see where it is. They just click on it and they come here. Well, I mean, certainly there's like there's always a container of some sort. Um, but then for the user, mm -hmm. uh, I guess they shouldn't see it. Well, if imagine the corporate web page, which is very clean, has a corporate logo, and then it has a little click here to begin, you know, or, or click here if you want information on this, click here if you want information on that. So you click here, and you come out on this page. But how you got there doesn't really matter. Uh, but it's up to your design. Or you could have, if, you, if this is the first page you want your students to come to, you could put that link into a tiny URL and you could tell them to go there or you could set up an Abu Fletcher page somewhere and they could go there and they could click on the link you want them to go to. What you're looking at right now is how Jane and I are getting people to sign up for, uh, to do their presentations at EVO, the best of EVO at TESOL. And so yeah, obviously like different, uh, sort of different systems for different purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, all the people who have written here have all just done this because they all shared the document and they they wrote on it. And this is the first time I've seen this in some time, but we have all these, uh, uh, they even have times on them. I guess, Jane, did you do that? No, I didn't. It wasn't me. <laughs> well, that's fine. Anyway, they've scheduled themselves, but we'll go sort that out later. We don't even know how long each person has. but Oh, that's, give, that was back in the 2000, oh, Atlanta. Oh, that's Atlanta. Ah, uh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I hit the wrong one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. By the way, so, I found the annotation tools for the shared, for shared screen or whiteboard. It, the link is in the chat. The link is in the chat. Yeah. Annotation okay. tools, then you know how to do, use annotation. Chat, here we go. Chat. Yes, I've got it. Yay. Okay. God, so, please check that out. That's what ah, an annotated whiteboard in Zoom. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. All right. 
Oh, guys, I don't know how long we should go. This is video has gone on for an hour and a half now. Yeah, yeah I kind of forget this for uh, public consumption, right? <laughs> well, no, not really, but it is also for public consumption. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, sounds but I mean, we're, we're discussing things that are very relevant to the course that I'm teaching and that, that is relevant to us because we're all obviously quite involved in this kind of thing. Setting up blended learning environments is all relevant. And I think sometimes discussing it and sort of positing what if this and then that, you know, that's a good way to, uh, for people uh, to learn how as to do I, As I posted in my uh, Facebook post today, the EVO, uh, group. Today I had my annual performance evaluation mm. and at the end the university principal or principal, uh, president wanted to know um, first he said first it was like well what do you see as the differences between online communication and face-to-face -face communication and I was like great I really want to talk about that and you know sort of clued him in on some of the the basic things there. But then his next question, I almost kind of knew where this was going. And that was, uh, the question was, what sort of effect do you see AI having on English language teaching? Uh, are you going to have a job in the future? That kind of idea, the idea that somehow with AI, you simply wouldn't need English language teachers anymore. And I think there's, just that question itself almost needs to be unpacked in lots of different ways to say what are, you know what are the assumptions that go into making that that statement you know what do you think language is do you see it simply as something to be able to you have to write a business letter saying there's a meeting next week at um, thursday at three o'clock we can use google translate for that kind of stuff um but I did say, well, <clears throat> as teachers, we need to then bring in more of these uh, AI resources and show students how to use them. So, for example, uh, Google Translate with Japanese to English is miserable. It's just, it's hopelessly useless. How about, yeah. have you done with the Chinese? How, how is it with Chinese? It's really bad. Arabic. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Arabic, same. Students yeah, like, in Arabic, they get an English transliteration and they... I, I hate it. Now, for example, German and Spanish are wonderful, mm -hmm. but you know, with Japanese, it's it would actually take you more time to correct it than yeah. to simply translate it to Sarvic. I hate it when I they up on do their question. abstracts, translate their abstract into English, and have you you know go over it. It's really painful. Now, have what I have what I have done, what I've used in a writing class, is we'll have a let's say a complex sentence in Japanese, and I say, what you need to do, you can't put the whole sentence in. But if you break it down into phrases and put each phrase into Google Translate, Google Translate will do a reasonable job of providing with suitable phrases. Then once you have the phrases, you have to reassemble them into the complex sentence. So it's kind of like saying in science, it's okay to use a calculator. You know, there was a time when we didn't allow that. We say, why not let people use their translator, translating devices? We just sort of teach them how to use it. We include it in the process of being a language teacher. So anyway, it was nice to be able to talk about that. All the rest of the interview, uh, we are forced to do that entirely in Japanese. Even though they know that I don't really do Japanese, they don't break from that. This is, this is the way we do it. But the university principal was one an English teacher himself, so he spoke to me in English. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm gonna. On that note, thank you very much. Okay. Um, Thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. And, I just uh, clicked on here. I wasn't certain whether people are gonna be here. I hadn't checked whether 14 UTC is uh, time. What time I, is it there, by the way? It's um, 11.36. Yeah, same time here in Malaysia, and you're one hour ahead. Yeah, yeah we're like 12.30 here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, it's good, good talking with you all. Yes. Yeah. See, see you again. Okay, and I'm...
posting all this under learning together. Nah, uh, this is not a good that. episode. Uh, episode. <laughs> I got to work four, on this one, zero. maybe. You know that. <laughs> oh yeah, Spider Man. I don't know yeah, how so to do that. I, I can, I can maybe do that. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Okay. All right. Bye. So we're in the 28th of February, 2020. And uh, I always say that's learning together episode 440, a part of it. I already started blogging that. And it's part of the learning together, sorry, using, uh, creating and creating. using blended learning course, uh, which is running with Relo Bangkok. And I have with me here Jane Xian and Don Carroll, good friends from long ago and recently. And nice to see everybody here. And uh, Hope everyone enjoys this recording. So bye bye. Bye bye. Yep. Bye -bye. Figure out how to turn it off. How do I switch off the recording? Oh, here we go. I got it. Okay. Bye.